Hello everyone, we are back once again out on the high iron, finding whatever we can find out on the rails. But today, our adventure is a little bit different. On this wonderful Saturday, I'm up with fellow rail fan and buddy Ice Climber as we explore Norfolk Southern's Atlanta North End. Ice Climber was very averse with the area, but as for me, this was my first time visiting many of these places, and I had an absolute blast visiting all these new locations and getting some very nice footage. Before the day started, however, I must admit, <clears throat> I was selling, I was selling big time. Before we had gone out, the day was planned that Ice Climber was gonna drive over to have a Y, I meet him up there, and then he would take us on all the different spots that he knew on the Atlanta North End, right? So the night before, I messaged him on Discord and I asked him, hey, just to make sure, we're still meeting up at have a Y, right? And he says, yup. All right, so cool beans, cool beans. The next morning comes by, right? 9.43, he messages me, almost there. 9.51, I'm here, where you at? 10.14. Bro, please tell me you didn't oversleep. 1040, he sends this image, and it is at this time that I finally look at my phone and realize, oh my lord, I sold. Oh, I really sold. This guy oh, Ice Climber, I know you're probably going to be watching this. My fault, big dog. Um, I was selling big time. I stayed up to like 3 a.m. with some friends the night before, and that was definitely not the move if I knew I had to wake up at 9 a.m. to make it to How Y before 10. Fortunately, because he was at How Y, he wasn't completely bored. As you've seen from my How Y footage, there's always trains running there. So he was just real fanning while he was waiting for me to eventually answer my phone. We met up at a bridge that was closer by, so I didn't have to bike over there. And then we started our journey up the north end. So our first stop was at CP Nickajack. And let me. Let me just put this on the screen since I know the timing that some of y'all be on. It didn't take long for action to arise. Shortly after we got here, some train was coming out of Inman heading up north and we were here for it. We were actually discussing whether or not uh, CP Nickajack had been turned into a quiet zone. He thought that I hadn't. I was pretty sure that I had. And honestly, I was hoping I was wrong. And unfortunately, I was not. We heard not a single horn toot while we were here, but hey, it was a beautiful morning, so we just got whatever footage we could of the train coming by. Our next stop was a place you've probably seen before, Mableton, Georgia. When we got here, there was actually a clear for another train, and there was some manifest parked under the bridge that wasn't moving. Instead of staying here, however, we elected to instead continue on to Austell, Georgia. He took me to another spot where you can't really see the east end of Austell, but you can see where Whitaker Yard starts. And off in the distance, we can actually see a train entering the yard. We thought that this was the train that we had seen at TP Nickajack, but we weren't certain. So we wanted to see if we could catch a train at Powder Springs, Georgia, which he had said, according to him, that he had very poor luck catching trains there. Like I said, I'm never getting the train. And the poor luck would continue oh as the God. train that we had seen at Nickajack. Literally, as soon as we got there, the engines were traversing the Red Cross and we were like, ah, oh, shoot. So we tried chasing it up north. I kid you not when I say, I think we missed this train four or five times. We tried catching it at so many different spots. We missed a loaded coal train and another auto rack train while we were chasing up there. And who knows what else we missed. And then in the midst of us missing this train over and over again, we got jump scared by another train at Lindale, Georgia. This turned out to be NS-284, which was coming into stop. But regardless, we kept on with our chase hoping that we would manage to catch this freight train and we never did with us realizing that we probably were not going to catch this head end we instead decided to make the first of many stops we would be making on this journey at Braswell, georgia specifically on brushy mountain road our train misses would continue as literally as soon as we got here the tail end of an auto rack train was clearing an auto rack train that had you know nothing in particularly special leading fortunately for us as soon as we got here the signals turned green 
and you would think with a clear that a turn would be coming soon because originally yellow and then a turn green so we're thinking oh yeah maybe like 15 or 20 minutes and we'll see something i kid you not we waited here for probably 40 or 45 minutes incredible before we even had any glimpse of a train and peep i left my scanner in my dorm because i didn't think i was gonna need it i don't know why i did not think we were gonna need that scanner because ice climbers was so bad bro Try. but anyways we were basically in the dark for 45 minutes and then finally finally we begin to hear something you hear that noise that is the sound of raw emd power climbing up the hill specifically of a sd70 ace which is leading this empty coal train up the summit For some reason, the second unit was not online. So all the motive power for this train was from the very lead unit and for a DPU unit on the rear of this coal train, which we'll see soon. After the coal train cleared, we decided that we would continue up north and see if we could find this coal train again. Our next stop was Control Point Aragon in Aragon, Georgia. And even though Ice was convinced that we had missed this train by the time we got there, sure enough, we saw headlights in the distance. So we each chose our spots, got set up for recording, and sure enough, the gate soon activated. After this train, we were both hungry, so we took a quick pit stop to Chick-fil-A before we started heading back south. We had decided that we didn't need to go any further north. And our first stop on this southbound return back to Atlanta would be in Rock Mart, Georgia, specifically at CP Ollie. Here, there wasn't anything immediately, but there was a yellow for both the southbound and northbound signals, so we knew that there had to have been two trains coming. We heard a distant K5HL, and soon the nose of a BNSF Jeevo came rounding the curve. But then we also heard the distant sound of a K3LA horn.
That distant horn is not of the train that you see on the screen. That is for another train that the train you're seeing right now is stopping for. This distant train that's coming in, this is actually an auto wreck train that I actually saw in Atlanta when ICE picked me up before we started moving up north. This train was actually running behind us and now, hours later, it is finally caught up with us once again here at CP Ollie. I'm pronouncing its presence, the auto wreck train with the UP AC44 on the head end slowly came rounding the curve. Even though the Autorack had a mid-train DPU, we decided that we would skip it. We didn't need to stay filming the whole train because the entire contest was just Autoracks. Our next stop, which will be back in Braswell, Georgia, is now at Coots Lake Road. And specifically, we came here because of the S-curve that you can see at this position. We knew that the cold train would eventually start moving once the Autorack train had cleared. And before long, we began to hear the distant sound of the engines roaring as they're trying to take this now loaded coal consist up over the summit. be completely honest i have a big gripe with this end clip right here this had the potential to be so good but i lost my footing a little bit as i was panning and you can see a little hitch as i'm painting the locomotives go around the curve oh my lord but it, it was all right anyways after this train had passed we tried chasing it as we've tried so many other times to some really off-road area like you really had to know this place beforehand to find it and of course as soon as we got here the deep views were passing by we sat here for a good 40 minutes seeing if maybe anything would come by and nothing did 
So we decided that we would leave. However, I still had my train checker on my phone out and I saw that there was something coming out of Inman. So we decided to stop by Austell, Georgia. It didn't take long for the train that had prompted this stop to come around. This was Norfolk Southern 369 that had an SD70 ACU leading it. I can't even tell you the last time I saw one of these things leading a train and without warning, one just pops up here. After the train, we saw that something else was lined out of Inman and was pretty close by, so we made another stop at Mapleton, Georgia. That Rambo we had seen earlier at Austell was still present, and we were hoping and praying that it would stay for this train as it arrived. And fortunately for us, before we knew it, the Rambo was still in the sky and the gates activated for NS26C, a light hour move towards Whitaker Yard. It did sink that the clouds got in the way and put a shadow on the locomotives right as they were coming by. But regardless, I'm not gonna complain about the footage that I got here. This was, this was very nice footage. Anyways, we thought that this is gonna be the last trade of the day. We thought that we had honestly hit our luck after a series of failures to start off the day. We had seen a random ACU leader and then we had this light power move coming under a rainbow. And even though there was something else actually lined out of Whitaker Yard coming into Inman, we decided to leave Mableton just because we didn't think there was gonna be anything special. That was until I checked the Austell rail cam and saw a SD70 M-2 oh leading Whitaker Yard leading an intermodal train. So we were not gonna miss this to end off the day and we made another final pit stop of the day at CP Bridge, another very popular rail finding spot in the Atlanta area. There was a lot of truck and train activity that occurs at this spot, but of course, we're here for the rails. The headlights of that M-2 liter that we had seen on the cam shortly appeared in the distance. The golden hour and in international containers, this long and adventurous day finally comes to an end.
Ice Climber, I appreciate your patience with me and for taking me out to all these spots. I surely had a blast. As for the rest of my fellow viewers, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, God bless. I'll see you soon out on the high island.